This show is sponsored by Two Fat Lardies, who produce a wide range of War Games rules covering both different periods and different levels of battle. Of particular interest from the Napoleonic era would be Sharp Practice, a set of rules designed to skirmish game in the Napoleonic period, or alternatively, the Fusacra, which is designed for divisional and corpus level actions in the same period. Be sure to check them out at the Two Fat Lardies website and play the period, not the rules. Welcome once again to another episode of the Meeples and Miniatures and Miniature Review Show with me, your host, Neil Shook. In today's show, we're going to be looking at one of the recent releases from Warlord Games. Now, Warlord have been gradually building up their Napoleonic range of plastic and metal miniatures. Over the past several months, you may remember a while back we looked at their Prussian Landwehr. Well, this time we are looking at... Uh, another plastic box set release for them, and these will be their Napoleonic Russians, specifically the 1812 to 1815 line infantry. Now, this is one of uh, two sets of plastic Russians they have. Uh, the other is the 1809 to 1815 line infantry. But as I say, what we're concentrating on today is the 1812 to 1815 later war infantry set. So here we see a quick example of the, the box art and, and what's on the front and the back of the box. A fairly standard layout now from Warlord. The back showing a, an example painted regiment and full contents of what's in the box. OK, so 32 infantry in total. What we have are seven plastic sprues, as we see here. And then we have separately a plastic bag containing four metal miniatures. So... 28 uh, rank and file troopers and then four metal troopers forming the command unit which includes uh, an officer, a drummer and two standard bearers. You also get a background guide to the Russian infantry along with uh, a couple of pieces of advice. Now this infantry is designed to represent both grenadiers or musketeers and gives you a little bit of note down on the bottom right hand side how to represent musketeers as opposed to the grenadiers. Okay, uniforms are very, very similar. Uh, so just a, a few changes to potential heads and a rear pouch. On the flip side of this, we have an example of several regimental flags. Uh, remember we said you've got a couple of standard bearers in the game, so you can use a couple of these. Unfortunately, because this is produced on the flip side, of the background. Uh, if you want to use these flags you're going to have to cut the background up. Which isn't ideal because some people you know, might want to keep hold of the blurb that uh, Warlord produced. But there you go. Also notice that there are no bases in this box set. Okay, It's just the infantry and the command squad. They aren't produced with any bases. So you're going to have to provide those yourself. OK, so let's take a Close look at the sprue you get hold of. Here we see the front of it. You've got a fairly standard layout for, for these sort of troops the, uh, these days. Uh, you'll note all the troops are almost one pose. You've only got a couple of separate things. Uh, you've got a, a separate pack and also separate heads. Otherwise, they are virtually one piece miniatures. Posed in the, <laughs> I suppose, almost famous Napoleonic March Attack pose. And you see you've got actually four different poses on the sprue. As well as that, each of the uh, backpacks are slightly different. So you'll see that uh, you've got a slight difference there. And also then you have, if you look down the bottom, eight different heads. Okay, you've got four heads with Charcos without plumes, four heads with Charcos with plumes. 
Okay, if you flip them over, you'll see how the figures fit together. Quite simply, a small hole and peg arrangement on the back of the figure and the back of the backpack. And then, obviously, we see the heads on the front. So, very simple figures to put together, which is quite useful because Russian Napoleonic regiments tend to have an awful lot of infantry. So, uh, the fact that these are really simple to put together is quite useful as you may be needing quite a few of them. Okay, so these are suppose Let's have a look at what these look like once you put some stuff together. This show is sponsored by Coat Darmus Paints. Coat Darmus have been supporting the wargamer and hobbyist for well over 20 years with a wide range of over 150 acrylic paints. These are all available individually or have been grouped together either into triads so you can use them in a, a three colour paint system or alternatively they are easily purchased as period sets which will give you a group of colours suitable for a particular period or even army. Be sure to check them out at the Coat d'Arms website. So here we see an example of four different infantry and immediately you'll notice that we've got some very nice detailing on the figures and especially on the Sharkos. Also uh, some nice work with, with the faces and what we'll do here we'll take a quick look around them. I've not done a, a fantastic amount of cleaning up as you'll see the, uh, there's a few bits and pieces that will need cleaning up especially of note the sides of the pack uh, where they're attached to the sprue will need some careful cleaning uh, the shoulders on the figures that's what, again where they're attached to the sprue so things that, that you'll need to be aware of and pay attention while you're putting your figures together take a this back shot you'll see you know, a couple of bits on the on the back of the Sharko Again, also on top of the plumes, uh, again, that's where they're connected to the sprue. That's where you'll need to be aware and take care of cleaning up. We immediately see there's some you know, nice detailing on these figures. Pretty impressed with these, as we said. They're very nice looking, and although there's a little bit... I mean, if you look on this last slide, there is a little bit of ill definition around a couple of the hands around the rifles. Nothing too, you know, nothing too major at all, and, and nothing that you would really find an issue with in comparison with their metal counterparts. And I'm sure, actually, once uh, these were uh, painted, put on the table, you would be very hard pressed to tell the difference. You know, I think these have got some very nice detailing on them. You know, Warlord are now in a, in, at a point where they are as standard producing some very fine plastic miniatures. Let's have a quick look at the command pack. And uh, you, you saw the pack it came earlier. This is how it came out. I must admit, on this particular one, I decided not to assemble the figures. As you can see, uh, lots of bits of runoff on these. Uh, again, lots of different helmet options. Again, you know, this uh, box set is produced for both Grenadier or Musketeer regiments. And so you have the options to produce both four figures, officer, two standard bearers, and a drummer. You know the drummer has his drum slung, and he's marching without it. The standard bearers actually come with two metal spears, plus a couple of flag finials. And both the officer and the drummer have the option of adding uh, a single separate arm, which can be posed in a couple of different places. Also, of note, you'll see that a couple of the head options are available for bear heads as well as uh, heads with shark eyes on them. So, a few different options amongst the metals. Again, these look very well done. They say there's a lot, uh, well, a fair amount of runoffs, uh, a few mould lines that can be seen on these figures, and you know, fair amount of cleaning up to be done. And it has to be said, uh, you know, looking at these and then comparing them with the the plastic counterparts, it's getting to the point where I actually think the plastic figures look better than the metal ones that they're producing alongside them. Okay, so that's what you get. What they suggest is a full regiment, which is 32 troops in total. These are priced at £18 for a box set. And as with most Warlord Plastic games, uh, as well as being available from the Warlord website, which is www.warlordgames.com, they're also available from several different distributors, so you should be able to get hold of these pretty easily. At time of recording, 
The Perry Twins are actually just about to release their own box of Russian infantry, so it will be interesting to see how these compare against those once the Perrys come out. But suffice it to say that the Napoleonic Russian player will have plenty of options available in the very near future. In addition to these, Warlord provide several different metal blisters to go with them, uh, primarily uh, some casualties and a couple of command groups. No cavalry as yet, hopefully that is to come in the future. A final addition to Warlord's ever-increasing range of figures, I think actually these are a vast improvement over their previous Prussians. Slightly better defined in the sculpting, nicely detailed, have even on the plastics uh, some nicely sculpted faces and when they're painted up they're uh, suggest pretty indistinguishable from their metal counterparts so if you're building a Napoleonic Russian army I think these are very much worth a look This show is sponsored by Wargame Soldiers and Strategy magazine from Caravanserai Publishing Wargame Soldiers and Strategy is a bi-monthly ma- magazine especially for wargamers and specialises in all sorts of articles to get your wargaming juices flowing, whether it be ideas for scenarios and campaigns, tips and guides for painting, or reviews of all the latest rule sets and models. You'll find everything you need at Wargame Soldiers and Strategy. Check them out on the website. Well, that's just about all we've got time for on this episode of the Meeples and Miniatures Miniature Review Show. I hope you found it both entertaining and useful, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care until next time. Happy gaming. Bye.